Hello everybody, this is Tiziano and today we're going to explore the software in the loop in Mission Planner. Mission Planner is the famous ground control software that works with Mavlin compatible autopilot stacks like Arduopilot or Pix4 and OE developer has to thank the great job of Michael Ober. Now, there are even better looking ground control software around, either open source like Ku Ground Control or APM Planner or commercial. But Mission Planner is very detailed and let developers to test even advanced features thanks to hidden menus. For example, how many of you knows that Control F opens a hidden menu with all incredible features? And again, how many of you knows about the software in the loop tab in Mission Planner? Well, I hope that this video of mine will help you get used to it because it's an incredible tool for both training and testing. Because as the name suggests, the software in the loop simulates both the physics of your vehicle and the autopilot all in the same process. The Software in the Loop tab offers a lot of options. For example, you get to select which type of vehicle you want to simulate, whether a multi-rotor, a helicopter, a plane, or even a rover or a quad plane. And then you select the simulation speed, whether real-time or accelerated. Then Mission Planner downloads the Software in the Loop from the internet, compiled with the latest master version of the autopilot firmware and runs it on a separate window. You get to connect to that process through the TCP port 5760 and 5762. Well, today we're going to explore the software in the loop tab in Mission Planner, first by setting up a multi-rotor with a gimbal and then creating an automation with a region of interest and let it fly around it. Later, we are gonna set up my Windows machine with DrumKit and we're gonna connect one of my script to the software in the loop. So basically we can start developing our script in Windows and even test them in Windows and forget about Linux, even though I do like Linux better. So if you are a fan of Mission Planner and you want to know more about the Software in the Loop tab, just follow me in the next tutorial. Select Simulation Pane and then we select the vehicle. In our case we're going to select the Hexacopter and then we click on Multi-Rotor. This will download the software in the loop at the latest master version and then it will connect Mission Planner directly to it. Now Mission Planner will be connected on TCP port 5760 and as you see we take off and we control our system exactly as it was flying. You see I'm taking off and I'm moving it around in guided mode. Now let's make things more interesting. Let's go in initial settings and go into gimbal setup. Now we're going to set up our gimbal as servo and we're going to control only the tilt angle and as you see you have to click the stabilized tilt otherwise it won't work. Now those options are going to be effective only after a reboot. In order to do that you have to reboot the software in the loop. So we uh, stop it and then we go back, we select the same vehicle and we click on multi-rotor and it will download it again and it will connect Mission Planner to the same port and here we go. Now our vehicle is going to have a gimbal setup. So we can take off and we can click on uh, point the camera here and as you see on the map you'll see a blue mark that indicates where your camera is looking at on the map. See, pretty neat. Now let's set up a mission and we create a mission around a region of interest. We set a region of interest here and then we uh, go around here and then what we do, we, we clean the region of interest and we go to waypoint number seven. Okay, let's try it out. We arm and we take off and then I command the system to start a mission. And you see the vehicle will start going to number one and then as soon as it hit number two, we'll orient the camera toward the region of interest. And here we go. See the vehicle is pointing the camera to the region of interest and we can verify it with the blue marker. And then after number five, I have a reset region of interest setting all the parameters to zero and the camera is pointed straight forward as it was before. Okay, now in order to make things even more interesting in the simulator, you can go in the configuration and you can navigate to the scene parameters. For example, let's change the wind direction and intensity. We set the wind direction from south, 180, and the intensity is 6 meters per second.
Now let's, for example, change the direction and we'll see that the wind now is coming from east. In fact, if we try and move toward uh, east, we'll see that the vehicle is struggling moving forward. Here we go. That's interesting. So you can simulate a realistic wind in your mission. Now let's, for example, add some turbulence. So it will make the system behave more realistic. We go back here and we select sim and we select sim wind turbulence. We set to one and here we go. The vehicle is moving, jumping around like it was in a, a normal wind. Let's try, for example, another parameter, the GPS accuracy. We reduce the GPS accuracy and it'll make the EKF filter uh, more noisy, for, of course, and more realistic. Now let's, let's simulate an RC fail. We go in, in SIM parameters and we select SIM RC fail as one. And you can see the system goes in fail safe and in return to launch. Let's download Python 2.7 for Windows and install it. Then we fork the DroneKit Python repository and we git clone our fork on our local machine. After that, we browse into the folder and then we type Python setup build and after that, Python setup install. Now we browse into our How to Drones Work repository and we go into our scripts folder. Start Mission Planner, start the software in the loop. Now we run our test 05 about trajectory tracking. If you don't remember it, you can find the link in the description below. This time we're going to set the connect string as TCP localhost and then the port 5762. As you see, we connect with the software in the loop and now our drone is connected with both the drone kit script and the mission planner. As before, I set a waypoint and I upload the mission and then as soon as the mission is uploaded, my script takes off and starts tracking the circular trajectory around the waypoint. Now, I hope that this video of mine helped you figure out what incredible tool you have in your hands. Mission Planner is not only a great tool for your missioning, but also for your simulation and testing in the lab. You get to connect your companion PC to the software in the loop and let it fly in your virtual environment all from your desk. So thanks again, Michael Ober, for your incredible tool. But I was thinking that I would probably like to create a mini series about Mission Planner and in general, ground control software. So if you happen to be in a developer theme of these systems, just let me know in the comments below and we can do something together. I can't wait to see what we can do. But for now, I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.